welcoming you into high school spotlight as we prepare for week four of the Texas high school football season. How in the world are we already in week four? Sometimes I think I'm getting older, but I'd also like to think we're having fun. In fact, I'm going to go with the latter there as we have a jam-packed football edition of the show coming up. Plus a little water polo action as we are now a month, a month, folks, into the newest sport of the UIL. But we begin with the fact that we entered this Texas high school football season fresh off the year of South Oak Cliff, as I like to call it. You're reigning 5A Division II state champ, first Dallas ISD champion since 1958, capturing one of the most meaningful victories of last season because of the impact it had on inner city programs throughout the state that were long told it was not possible. Well, on December 18th, 2021, that narrative changed. For the first time since 1958, Dallas ISD has a team that can claim a state championship. South Oak Cliff kicked in the door for every inner city program in the state of Texas. This is a monumental moment in Texas high school football. You don't even understand how many people you affect, how many people, how many times I've been told from random people, man, if you had tears in our eyes, you know, just to really make something that was a, a dream come true that a lot of people didn't ever think they'll see in their lifetime. I grew up on my side of town where I'm at in the East Dallas area. Seeing those kids be able to uh, accomplish something more than maybe what somebody else before them wasn't able to, so it's a real moment for everybody. In the city, there's so many things that you go through. You know, even that skyline, like it's just, people have no idea what it is you go through to get through a day. You know, all the different challenges and the obstacles that come with that. Just to watch them win a state championship and, and the way that they went about it, it, it gave me hope. Like the night before when Austin LBJ became the first Austin ISD school to simply see the title stage since 1973 and doing so with far fewer players than most of its opponents. Full speed, max effort, no matter the situation. We can use our situation as an excuse. Oh, well, I don't have these facilities, or I don't have this feeder system, or I don't have, you know, this or that, these many coaches. But at the end of the day, create a culture within your program that's going to win. People kind of look at inner city programs like, hey, you don't have the resources to be successful. You don't have a lot of things that your suburban counterparts have in order to have a successful program, or even to advance in the playoffs or even to win a state championship, you just don't have what they have. I remember talking to Coach Todd and people talked about not having resources. And he said, I don't think I've ever lost a game because I didn't have resources. I didn't have enough bags or I didn't have this. And that stuck in my mind, like this guy doesn't have any excuses. He's not trying to make an excuse, he's trying to win. He didn't do it the way that everybody told him how he has to do it. He came and overcame a lot of adversity. And when I see stuff like that, I know it can happen now. An approach mastered under his longtime mentor, South Oak Cliff alum, Reginald Samples. And while Samples still pursues his own title, he takes victory in knowing his protege hoisted a trophy that transcended South Dallas. I learned the blueprint on how to be successful in Dallas ISD. I just took that blueprint that he gave me. And then what I did, I just added Todd's little Toddisms, you know, here and there. The all white and then the hoodies and, you know, just the, the flair of, okay, that's not really a traditional way to do things, but that's their way. They really catered to their kids, you know, their community and, and what they liked and what they knew was, was right for them. And those kids that he had, they're, they're bought into him. And they bought him to him because he's, he's him. And he's, he's authentic, he's real. What I embraced the most was the struggle, the grind, the whole entire process that we went through, you know, to get to the final destination. One, two, three, that boy. We got stuff to work on, but I think we got potential. You know, we got to put it together this summer with a lot of work. Last year, after tomorrow, don't exist no more. Everything we've done in the past is over, because it don't count for nothing no more. Don't nobody care about last year when this year comes. You never know what can happen. But if you believe in, you know, your system, you believe in your program, and you set your standard and your structures, I guarantee you can be successful. After SOC won it, I got a lot of text messages saying, Coach, no more excuses, you're next. And I embrace that. And my hope is that 
Our kids continue to, to, to grind and believe and see what Sock did and see what LBJ did and get there. Yeah, to have had not one but two inner city programs on the biggest stage last year was monumental. And to think with LBJ moving up a classification this year, the two could meet on that stage in December. It might have been part of my bold prediction in the season preview show. Just saying as our Baylor Scott and White Health game diagnosis shows us some of the most recent or notable inner city champs on the hardwood. Yeah, we've had a number of juggernauts in the basketball realm over the last few seasons. And what these programs have done is, is just build dynasties, right? Faith Family Academy having captured a pair of UIL state championships in Class 4A since since 2019. Then you have Dallas Madison having won three. Those two schools, in fact, have proven themselves to be the cream of the crop when it comes to inner city basketball. And let's not forget Dallas Lincoln getting their title in 2016.